Hi, I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered if we can domesticate anything? <laughs> We've domesticated pigeons for carrying messages, llamas for carrying loads, ferrets for hunting, camels for racing, goldfish for ornamentation, rats for research, and of course, sheep, cattle, chickens, as well as cats and dogs. So surely there are endless other opportunities. Which animal would you domesticate and for what purpose? Just imagine using a pelican to carry your shopping, or a hippo to take the kids to school, or maybe even a cheetah if they're running late. To find out if this is possible, it's probably worth looking at how we built this, the dog. No one can say when the dog was first domesticated, but the earliest dog bones were discovered in Belgium around 31,000 years ago. The first dogs were simply tame wolves brave enough to scavenge from human settlements. Those that were least aggressive got hand reared, so they no longer needed their powerful jaws and sharp teeth. It's thought that they basically went through a process of self-domestication. Humans then began breeding them for specific purposes, whether that be herding, hunting or protecting. In the first century, Roman ladies even carried lap dogs because it was said that their warmth helped to cure stomach ache. Every part of the dog was carefully selected, from their size, weight, hair type, leg length, aggressiveness, and of course, their colour. In fact, Charles Darwin himself noted that drooping ears are a telltale sign of domestication. Can you think of a single wild animal with floppy ears? So can we do this for every species on Earth? Well, there is evidence to suggest that even unlikely specimens can be domesticated. Russian scientist Dmitry Belyaev bred silver foxes that were comfortable around humans. After more than 40 generations of foxes, the new population became more dog-like. They had no fear of humans, lost their musky smell, had extended reproductive seasons, grew short or curly tails, and even had floppy ears. But what else can be domesticated? Could jockeys ever raise zebras at the Kentucky Derby? Well, no. Although zebras can interbreed with horses, and there have been a few isolated cases of taming a zebra, the species appears to be completely impervious to domestic UCLA professor Jared Diamond is an authority on domestication, and he's proposed a series of prerequisites for a wild animal to become domesticated. Firstly, their diet should be varied so they can survive on our scraps. They also need to grow up fast. Aww. There's little point trying to domesticate a long-lived animal because it could take several years before they make themselves useful. They must also be happy to breed in captivity. Pandas, for example, would be a bad choice. They should also be calm and pleasant so they don't always try to escape and have some element of predictability. Finally, the animals should ideally live in a flexible social hierarchy in which we can take top position. Since we humans realised that animals had a lot more to offer than just being stuck on the end of a spear, we've made numerous attempts to domesticate many species. But only a few have been moulded for our desires, and these species, the cow, sheep, goat, pig, chicken, horse, cat and dog can be found throughout the globe, located almost everywhere that we inhabit. Domestication has gone so far in these few species, they can now be used for the most amazing purposes. To see some world-class dogs with jobs, check out this awesome video from Yuzu. Subscribe and we'll see you next time on Earth Unplugged.